Hello everybody, my name is Eli. My name is Caden. My name is Jaden. I'm Jason. And this is the Yahoo and the Torah channel, and someday we're going to get our act together. We're going to have a fantastic presentation, and it's going to blow your guys' minds once we do it. But until then, we are trying to get the intro going, and it's not there. Thank you guys for joining us. We are, as we said, the Yahoo and the Torah channel, and our goal here is to prop up, not that it needs any propping up, support, which it needs no support, um, throw some light onto it, which it needs no light, but without further introduction, we have the Torah which is the first five books of the Bible. And we went over a list of 613 commands that were based out of the Talmud, which is a very evil book that people should not be using for their life book because it is something outside of the Torah. It is something written by man. It is man-made doctrines. And inside of that Talmud is, is very evil stuff. And so we shouldn't be doing that. And I guess if those who say, oh, no, it is not a very evil thing, there is some stuff inside of it about pedophilia and there's stuff in it about hating our fellow man. Um, literally, if, if we are not what they call Jews, they are called goyim, and they can offend them, they can steal from them, they can do whatever they want to do. And if we look at just that right there, that is against the second of the greatest commandments, which is to love our neighbor as ourself. We are truly never, ever supposed to hate people or put them on that kind of a level and, and uh, offend them and hurt them and steal from them and do things like that because they are a, a different religion or something to the sort. So we want to go over this, and so far we have been through, let's see, what do we have, 14 commands? <clears throat> we'll go over them real quick. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over all living creatures, including pit bulls. The herb bearing in every tree is for food. Man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every cling, moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Don't eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Guard Yahuwah's covenant. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. And this is what, why we are here today. And so we are starting on the 22nd, I believe, 23rd, 23rd chapter of Genesis. And we will go through them. And I don't think we'll actually find any commands today, but we still got to go through them. And as a Berean, we must search the scriptures and find what we should be doing. <clears throat> Gentlemen, are you ready? Yep. Mm -hmm. And it is Shabbat, so Shabbat Shalom. How's everyone? Everyone kind of looks a little dreary today, a little, little tired. They haven't had some rest yet, but uh, we're getting on it. So um, thanks again for everybody joining us and spending your precious time with us. Genesis 23. And Sarah was 107 and 20 years old. These were the years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah died at Kirat Arba. The same is Kevron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. And Abraham stood up from before his dead and spoke unto the sons of Keth, saying, I am a stranger and a sojourner with you. Give me a possession of a burying place with you, that I may bury my dead out of my sight. And the children of Keth answered Abraham, saying unto him, Hear us, my Adonai. You are a mighty prince among us. In the choice of our sepulchers, bury your dead. None of us shall withhold from you his sepulcher, that you, that, but that you may bury your dead. And this situation here was actually accredited i can't remember what book um either jasher or jubilees or something or something of the sort that abraham not only asked them for a place because this land if you remember this land that they were on yah had already given this land to them so you have abraham who actually owns the land technically and he goes to these people in the midst of probably his greatest day of struggling he's, he's ever had when, when you lose your wife or you lose your mate um or your kids or something sort of that shit it's, it's a tremendously horrible horrible day month or week you know the whole thing right so this was accredited to him that his patience that even though he owned this land technically by the word of god that he was still he still offered up cash and he was doing this with a broken heart and so that, that is a huge thing verse seven and abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land even to the children of keth and he communed with them, saying, If it be your mind that I should bury my dead out of my sight, hear me and entreat me to Ephron, the son of Zokar, that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, 
which he has, which is in the end of his field, for as much money as it is worth, he shall give it me for a possession of a bearing place amongst you. So cost was no matter to Abraham. He had a, he was Absolutely loaded. loaded. He was like, uh, it doesn't matter what price it is, I just want the cave. Yeah, but he did not want it for free. Right? No, no, that, no, yeah. that is the thing, is they, they were willing to give this to him because he was a celebrity. You know, like they said, he was he was just a, uh, when they called him Adonai, he was like a master. Like, this was the man. Um, so, you know, people of Yahuwah, I mean, you can totally have a an amazing reputation. All right, and where are we at? Ten. Ten. And Ephron dwelt among the children of Keth. And Ephron the, the Kitty answered Abraham in the audience of the children of Keth, even of all that went in at the gate of his city, saying, Nay, my Adonai, hear me. The field give I you. And the cave that is therein, I give it you. In the presence of the sons of my people, give it, give I it you. Bury your dead. Well, that's rough. Mine just says, I shall give it to you. In the presence of my sons of my people, I shall give it to you. Yeah, it's every translation is a little bit crazier. This better than the king, though. <laughs> At verse 12. And Abram bowed down himself before the people of the land, and he spoke unto Ephron in the audience of the people of the land, saying, But if you will give it, I, pay, I pray you, hear me. I will give you money for the field. Take it of me, and I will bury my dead there. And Evron answered Abram, saying unto him, My Adonai, hearken unto me. The land is worth 400 shekels of silver. What is that betwixt me and you? Bury therefore your dead. And Abraham hearkened unto Ephron, and Abraham weighed to Ephron the silver, which he had named in the audience of the sons of Keth, 400 shekels of silver, current money with the merchant. And the field of Ephron, which was in Mechblah, which was before Mamre, the field, and the cave which was therein, and all the trees that were in the field, that were in all the borders round about, were made sure. Unto Abraham for a possession in the presence of the children of Keth, before all that went in at the gate of his city. And after this, Abraham buried Sarah, his woman, in the field, in the cave of the field of Machpelah, before Mamre, the same is Kevron in the land of Canaan. And the field and the cave that is therein, were made sure into Abram for a possession of a burying place by the sons of Keth. So right. they went back and forth for a long time. No, you can have it. Let me pay you. This was just a long, it was a long argument they had of let me pay you and uh, let me let's let us give it to you. But ultimate respect for Abram and who he was, which is interesting because everybody loved Abraham. Everybody, and then when he died, he it was everybody. They had a mourning for him for a very long time. Verse twenty-four, chapter twenty-four. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and Yahuwah had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham had said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray you, your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by Yahuwah, the Eli of heaven and the Eloi of earth, that you shall not take a woman unto my son of the daughters of Canaanian, uh, among whom I dwell. And everybody looked at me when, when he said this because... We've, we've uh, had some studies before of what exactly um, I, you put your hand in your thigh is. And it's a little bit different than the handshake of today. And so we are not exactly clear about all of this. Um, but it, it, it's a different kind of an oath that uh, I think a handshake was probably good. Um, verse 4, right? But, but you shall go in unto my country and to my kindred and take a woman unto, unto my son Yitchek. And the servant said unto him, perchance the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I, must I needs bring your son again unto the land from whence you came? And Abraham said unto him, beware that you bring not my son thither again. Yahuwah Elohai of heaven. And what is Yahuwah Elohai, folks? Uh, Elohim of Mars says... Yeah, Yahuwah my Elohim. Yahuwah Elohai. Mars just says Yahuwah of the Shamaim. Yahuwah Elohim of the Shamaim. Okay, yeah, so this one has Yahuwah Elohai. Okay, so he says... Let me just start that seven again. Yahuwah Elohai of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spoke unto me, and that swore unto me, saying, Unto your seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before you, and you shall take a woman unto my son from thence. And if the woman will not be willing to follow you, then you shall be clear from you shall be clear from this my oath. Only bring not my son thither again. So why does he not want his son to go there? Because uh, he's afraid that he will, because that's where Abraham originally came from, right? It was 
land of those people and he knows how, how their deeds work and how they work and he doesn't want his son to fall in love with that land and him to basically go off into the wayside. He wants his son to stay on the right path and go near him where he can make sure that he's on the right path and not fearing off. Yeah, the women. The women will get you. Um, and the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his Adonai, and swore to him concerning that matter. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his Adonai and departed. For all the goods of his Adonai were in his hand. And he arose and went to Abram Neharim. How's it say in your guys' book? Neharim. 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 Unto the city of Nacor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city, without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Yahuwah Elohai Adonai of Abraham, I pray you, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my Adonai Abram. Behold, I stand here by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down your pitcher, I pray you, that I may drink. And she shall say, drink. And I will give your camels drink also. Let the same be she that you have appointed for your servant Yitchak, and thereby shall I know that you have showed kindness unto my Adonai. So here's a situation where um, if you're looking for a sign, well, here's your sign, right? Um, so what is the sign? If a, a young maiden comes out and she is a servant. And she gives. Uh, she I cares about the animals. I think it's Eleazar, his servant. I think it's who this is. Eleazar? Yeah. And he's just like, uh, he says, send it with good speed. Like, let's make this quick. If she gives me water, then she's the one. Yep. And it came to pass, verse 15. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rivka. And Rivka is, is what? Rebecca. Rebecca. Rebecca, right? And so Rivka came out who was born to Bethuel, son of Milka, the woman of Nacor, Abram's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon a virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, let me, I pray you, drink a little water of your pitcher. And she said, drink, my Adonai. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have done drinking. So dun, dun, dun. All of a sudden we know who she is. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again unto the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. Now, camels, you guys know how much cows drink, right? Oh, yeah. You can imagine 10 camels drink more. It's more than just a bucket of water. So she was probably at this for probably at least 20 minutes, going to the well, dropping the water down, pulling it up. And if she was the only gal there, you know, that's, that's a good woman. That's, that woman is like rocking and rolling. What a good woman. So, um, and the woman... Yeah, she is only 10. She's 10 years old. Should we bring this up right now? This woman, this, this girl is only 10 years old. Times were different back then. Times were different back then, I guess. Is it? I mean, that's like, the <laughs> legal marrying age is like 18 years old. Yeah, how old, how old was, uh, was, was Jitchak when he married? Uh, he was like 40, 39, 40 years old. And how old was she? 10. 10, I think. That's 10. That's quite an age difference. Okay, we'll continue on. You can find that in Jasher. Yes, you can find that in Jasher. Um, where are we at, Nicole? Um, yeah, 21. 21. And the man wondering at her <laughs> held his peace to wit whether Yahuwah had made his journey prosperous or not. And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's weighed her down. I'm pretty yeah, sure she can't she, move after that one. Yep, she's stuck. He, he just captured her. <laughs> and said, whose daughter are you? Tell me, I pray you, is there room in your father's house for us to lodge in? And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, which she bore unto Nacor. She said moreover unto him, We have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped Yahuwah. And he said, Blessed be Yahuwah El Elohai Adonai of Yah Abraham, who has not left destitute my Adonai of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, Yahuwah led me to the house of my Adonai's brethren. And the damsel ran and told them of her mother's told of her mother's house these things. And Rivka had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man unto the well. What does Laban mean? I, I don't remember. White man. Wasn't white or something? I believe that means white. 
unto the well. So Laban ran out unto the man and unto the well. And it came to pass when he saw the earring and bracelets upon his sister's hands. And when he heard the words of Rivka, his sister saying, thus spoke the man unto me that he came unto the man and behold, he stood by the camels at the well. So the brother's going to check out, see what's really going on. 31. And he said, come in, you blessed of Yahuwah. Wherefore stand you without? For I have prepared the house and room for the camels. And the man came into the house, and he ungirded his camels and gave straw and provender for the camels and water to wash his feet and the men's feet that were with him. So 10 camels, that's going to be a lot of food. It's going to be a lot of water. It's going to be a lot of mess. These Some things are huge. A dude, couple dudes. It's like double the size of cows, I mean, at least for leg-wise. I mean, it's going to be a... I'm like, don't they drink like, like hundreds of gallons at a time? I don't know about hundreds of gallons, but I know they drink a lot. Some people say that the hump in the back of the neck of the camel is where they store the water. I don't know if that's a lie or true. More than I don't know. That doesn't sound right. I don't know. That's what they say. That's why they can go. The supposedly camels are can go forever without drinking, but I, I don't know if that's true. The ultimate hydrated system. Uh, yeah, I don't know if this is true or if it's just old wives' tales, some Babylonian spins that we have been told. Okay, um, where are we at? Mm -hmm. 33. And there was set meat before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told my errand. And he said, speak on. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. And Yahuwah has blessed my Adonai greatly, and he has become great. And he has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my Adonai's woman, bore a son to my Adonai when she was old. And unto him has he given all that he has. And my Adonai made me swear, saying, You shall not take a woman to my son of the daughters of the Kinium in whose land I dwell. But you shall go into my father's house and to my kindred and take a woman unto my son. And I said unto my El Adonai, Perchance the woman will not follow me. And he said unto me, Yahuwah before whom I walk will send his angel with you and prosper your way. And you shall take a woman for my son of my kindred and of my father's house. This is very interesting that Abraham is able to dispatch an angel. I mean, this is what it just said here. He's going to send an angel with you and prosper your way. So Abraham probably was not just the man's man. This is Yah's man. This is the, the angel's man. I mean, who, who, who has the ability to send, you know, all we, the best we have is we can pray for messengers. We can pray that, that you know, we'll be protected by them. But it sounds as if the man Abraham uh, was able to dispatch no, him. No, angel, come here, come here. I need your help. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Verse 41. Then shall you be clear from this oath when you come to my kindred. And if they give not you one, you shall be clear from my oath. And I came this day unto the well and said, O Yahuwah Elohai Adonai of Abram, if now you do prosper my way, which I go, behold, I stand by the well of water and it shall come to pass that when the virgin comes forth to draw water and I say to her, give me, I pray you, a little water of your pitcher to drink. And she say to me, both drink you, and I will also draw for your camels. Let the same be the woman whom Yahuwah has appointed out, of, out for my Adonai's son. And before I am done speaking in my heart, behold, Rivka came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down unto the well and drew water. And I said unto her, Let me drink, I pray you. And she made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will give your camels drink also. So I drank, and she made the camels drink also. And I asked her and said, Whose daughter are you? And she said, the daughter of Bethel, Nacor's son, whom Melchah bore unto him. And I put the earrings upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands. And I bowed down my head and worshiped Yahuwah and blessed Yahuwah Elohai Adonai of Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my Adonai's brother's daughter unto his son. And now if ye will deal kindly and truly with my Adonai, tell me, and if not, tell me, that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, the thing proceeds from Yahuwah. We cannot speak you good, bad, or good. Behold, Rivka is before you. Take her and go, and let her be your Adonai's son's woman, as Yahuwah has spoken. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshiped Yahuwah, bowing himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rivka. He, also, he gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. And they did eat and drink, he and the men, that were with him and tarried all night and they rose until up in the morning and he said send me away unto my Adonai and her brother and her, mo and her mother said let the damsel abide with us a few days at the least ten after that she shall go and he said unto them hinder me not 
seen Yahuwah has prospered my way. Send me away that I may go to my Adonai. And they said, we will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. And they called Rivka, the 10 year old, and said unto her, will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. And they sent away Rivka, their sister and her nurse and Abraham's sister and his men. And they blessed Rivka and said unto her, you are sister. Be the mother of thousands of millions and let your seed possess the gates of those who, which hate them. And Rivka rose and her damsels and they rode upon the camels and followed the men. And the servant took Rivka and went his way. And Yitchak came from the well, the way of the well, Bir Lachoy Roy, Lachai Roy. For he dwelt in the, ca in the country of the Negev. And Yitchak went out to meditate in the field in the evening. And he lifted up his eyes and saw and behold, the camels were coming. And Rivka lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Yitchak, she lighted off the camel. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walks in the fields to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my Adonai. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Yitchak all things that he had done. And Yitchak brought her into his mother, Sarah's tent, and took Rivka, and she became his woman, and he loved her. And Yitchak was comforted after his mother's death. All right, gentlemen. So we have a 40-year-old marrying a 10-year-old. Is that a problem? Um, I don't think it's a problem in y'all's eyes. Nowadays, it's not socially acceptable. That's not accepted by society. That's like So how long were they living back in those days? How long did Abraham live? Abraham, I think, lived 100, 175. 175. 175. Sarah lived almost 130. 130. And so you had Yitchak, he's 40, Rivka at 10. What is the difference between marrying, if you were 40 today, and marrying a 10-year-old, and being 40 then and marrying a 10-year-old? By the time you're 40, you're pretty old, and 10-year-olds are really super young. Back in the day, you're 40, you're probably still considered about 20 years old or less. Well, you die at 80, right? right so we're, we're, we have a third of the life we used to have. I guess, I guess the difference that I see in this is that if you are faithful, and it was set up by Yah, then it was it was the right thing to do. Nowadays, uh, and you know, probably people out there listening to this are probably like shaking their heads like, oh man, um, how, do, how do you discuss things like this? But I mean, it, it is for discussion. It is stuff that we should do. And um, it's, it's, you know, this isn't the only thing. The, the, when I talk about the Talmud, which is the thing we do not do, they're in there talking about like sex with three-year-olds. And um, how it's okay and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's definitely the most unholy thing that you've ever heard. Um, and so there, there, is a, there is a huge difference between the holy and the unholy and the profane and the unprofane. So just stuff for discussion that we're going here. I think we'll do, where are we at here? We are, this, be a third. this is a third. We're in 22 minutes. Do we have any commandments yet? This is what we're doing, guys. We're seeking the commandments. And so we're trying to read through this in an in organized manner and find the commandments. And um, let's roll. Let's do another one. And again, Abraham took a woman, and her name was Ketera. Ketora. What's the saying, yours? Ketura. 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 And she bore him Zimran, and Yakshan, and Medin, and Midian, and Yishbak, and Shuak. And Yakshan begat Sheva, and Dedan, and the sons of Dedan were Ashurim, Ashurim, and Letashim, and Leumium. And the sons of Midian, Epha, and Ephor, and Kanak, and Adia, and Eli Elda'a, all of these were the children of Keturah. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Yitchak. But unto the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Yitchak his son, while he yet lived eastward unto the east, unto the east country. Now here we are again. We have a whole bunch of women that are not the woman of Abraham. Right. This uh, is where Midian. I think Midian gets wiped off the map. At some yeah, we point. get a lot of uh, we get to read a lot of names of the like the Asherim. We get a lot of the people, the people that fight Yisrael later on. We get a lot of those generations. We get a lot of the beginning names. It's let me tell you, it is illegal. I think it's illegal. I don't know what country it's not illegal in to have more than one wife, but obviously to our Creator. I mean, at, uh, at this point, Sarah was dead, so we got a new wife. Sarah was dead, so we got a new wife. But concubines were a thing of families. It was like multiple wives. So is a concubine your wife? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. I don't think it's considered your wife. So 
uh, you know, besides the obvious, what is the what is the concub what would a, a concubine do for a family like this? I feel like they would like cook and clean. Help the idea. Cook and clean. We're gonna get shot. Like, he said every- <laughs> like, I feel it like it was like to help the family. I feel like it was to grow the family. Like it, it's a growth family. I'm just kidding. I'm just giving you. I'm giving you heck. Yes. Um. And and there's absolutely no woman out there who, if you say what your job is to cook and clean, no, no. I thought they're gonna maybe beat us, they're gonna like, crack us in the skull. They would help like the other person. That like, that is absolutely job. yes. And if we were not in such a uh, uh, sensitive era, that wouldn't be an issue because yeah, I mean that is the job of everybody in a house is to cling. And to do it. It's just not the job of a woman to do. But yeah, it was a different time and a different uh, experience. And so the, I guess what is the ultimate goal of this? Why would you have concubines? More kids? I mean, yeah. back in the days More there was kids. there was war and you needed like men to go to war with. You needed like a huge family to like fight. Well, like, Abraham had how many, how many servants? Yeah. 300. Oh, 300. I'm sure they all had and kids. What did it say? The servants, where did the servants come from? They were, a lot of them were born in his house. Yeah, they were born in his house. Some of them, yeah. So we're talking, I don't think we're talking like one or two concubines. If he had 300 servants that were born in his house, we're talking, he had some concubines. His concubines, he had some, I mean, there was a lot of people in there. So, I mean, there was a lot servants of families. Had. Servants had families. But I mean, there's there's a tremendous amount of people in this, in this house. And he, this guy, Abraham, had to be rich enough that he's able to support 300 meals, 600 meals. If there's 300 them, then there's 300 wives of the servants. So we're talking like plus kids, plus kids. So we're talking like a thousand people. I mean, how many uh, sheep a day is that to eat? How uh, many? You have faster if you eat one or two days a week. Eat one or two. <laughs> well, these are, well, that's the thing is you would become a little city, and that's the thing is if you wanted to be prosperous and not wiped off the map, because back in the day you would just there would be kings or something, just like the kings that went over and took over Sodom and Gomorrah. There were kings or, or there were tribes, and they would come and just wipe you out. If you had five people in a house and you had a little tiny house there. Dude, they would just come and take everything you had, destroy your house, take it. So you you had to be tough to survive, and the only way that you're going to be tough to survive is to um, grow your grow your own army. Grow your own army, and that's exactly what they did. All right, so here we are. Where are we at now? Seven. Seven. And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life, which he had lived. A hundred three score and fifteen years. How old is that? One hundred seventy-five. How, how old's the score? Thirty years. Twenty score is twenty years. So three scores, twenty, forty, sixty, and fifteen. So he would have been a hundred, twenty, forty, sixty, and fifteen, seventy, one seventy five. Yeah, they just say he lived 175 years here. Just... Uh, okay. Then Abraham gave up his rock and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. And the sons Yitchak and Yishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah in the field of Ephron, the, t- the son of Zokar, the Kitty, which is before Mamre. The field of Abraham purchased of the sons of Keth. There was Abraham buried and Sarah his woman. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that Elohim blessed his son Yitchak, and Yitchak dwelt by the well Bir Lechai Roy. Now these are the generations of Yishmael, Abraham's son, whose Hagar the Mitri, Sarah's handmaid, bore unto Abraham. So if it's Sarah's handmaid, does that make her Abraham's concubine? I don't know or does what the difference between concubine is. I don't have a clue either. I don't have the slightest idea. Anyone? Anyone out there who's listening to this? We don't know. Um, we don't know if it's just a, I, I don't know, was it multiple wives? I, I have no idea. And these are the names of the sons of Yishmael by their names, according to their generations. The firstborn of Yishmael, Nev- Nevioth and Kedar and Adbil and Mizvsam and Mish- Mishma and Duma and Masa, Hadar and Temya, Yetzer, Nefish and Kedma. I'm sure I'm slaughtering these. These are the sons of Yishmael, and these are their names by their towns and by their castles, 12 princes according to their nations. And these are the years of the life of Yishmael, 130 and seven years, and he gave up his Ruach and died and was gathered unto his people. And they dwelt from Kavila unto Shur, that is before Mitzriam, as you go toward Ashur, Ashur, and he died in the presence of all his brethren. And these are the generations of Yitchek, Abraham's son, Abraham began Yitchak. Yitchak was 40 years old when he took Rivka to be his woman, the daughter of Bethul, the uh, Armenia of Padam Aram, the sister of Levon, the Amory. And Yitchak entreated Yahuwah for his woman because she was barren. And Yahuwah was entreated of him and Rivka, his woman, conceived. You guys remember when, what age she was when she conceived? 30, I think. Yeah, was I think she 30? I think he was 60. So, they went from 10 years old 
30. To 30 before she ever had kids. Yeah. And so we are talking, they was, he was married to her for like 20 years. 20 years. And so that is a long time if you're barren. Um, that is a very long time if you're barren. And so, and Yitzhak entreated Yahuwah for his woman because she was barren. And Yahuwah was entreated of him and Rivka, his woman, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? Why am I thus? And she went to inquire of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah said unto her, two nations are in your womb. And two manner of people shall be separated from your generation. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. So this is very interesting. Everybody gives uh, Jacob Yitchak, they always say he's like the, the con man, the guy who's always conning people. But right here, Yahuwah told um, Rebecca something. What did he say? Uh, the, 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 the younger one's going to rule over this older one. The, other, little one's gonna, the older one's going to serve the little one. So when she goes out and deceives her old man and gets blessings and things of this nature. Um, so what, what do we have here? Well... We have a uh, prophecy that is to come to pass, and she later on goes out. I feel like she didn't have to do that. She didn't have to go deceive uh, Isaac to uh, take the blessing. I feel like y'all would have had his own way with it, but she was also part of the plan. But I don't feel like she was necessarily needed to do that. Well, she was told right here that basically the, the line of things. She was told prior to that, and we don't honestly know for a full fact if she did deceive her husband. Um, because like I've discussed with your mother before, um, husbands and wives discuss many, 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 many things that kids never, ever hear and things of that nature. And they're very close. And, um, they would have known, I mean, um, Esau was a rough dude, right? Esau was, was totally different. And, um, who loved Esau? Who loved Jacob? Uh, Isaac loved Esau. And then the mom, Rebecca, she loved y Jacob more. Right, and why? Why did why did the dad love the, the kid more? Because he was like a he was like a man's man. Yeah, he, was he was the hunter. hunter. He was like venison. He, he would go, go out and get kill me food. Something. And Jacob was like an indoor educated person, tent guy, guy in the tents. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Twins, boys. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. See, so yeah, your mom could have been just like that. Your mom looked up to heaven, and goes, "There's why are they fighting in my womb?" Yeah, that didn't happen. Okay. Um, and the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that, his bro he, the, after that came out, his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called Yaakov. Yaakov and Yitzhak was three score years old when she bore them. And so, and his name was called that didn't sound right. And Yitzhak, well, okay, was three year three score years old when she bore them. Uh, it just sounds weird. It seems more like, like when Rebecca born. Yeah, when Rebecca born. We said, and and okay. was six years old when she bore them. It was sixty? Sixty. Yes, Yitchak. Yeah. Right. Okay. Isaac was sixty years old when she gave birth to them. Okay. Yeah. All right. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was an upright man dwelling in tents. And Yitchak loved Esau because he did eat of the venison, and Rivka loved Yaakov. We always give it away. Spoiler alert, folks. We don't mean to. We just <laughs> we read so much. It's just all over the place. And Yaakov sawed porridge, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to El Yaakov, Feed me, I pray you, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Yaakov said, Sell me this day your birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Yaakov said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Yaakov. And then Yaakov gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Okay, this is partly on Esau. Esau gave it up. For huh? Esau did give up his birthright. Esau can't uh, blame Jacob for that one. He gave up. So they had... Um, they had two different blessings, right? Right. They had a birthright, and then they had, because he was, um, so he was, he gave it up. Okay, why, it says right here, he was about to die. And I am at the point to die. This guy was how old? Jacob, if Jacob was 40, um, he, he saw it would have been 40, right? 40-ish? Right. Does it say they're 40 here? Um... No, it's Yitchak was 60 years old. Uh, so this is like way later. This is way later in life. We got a huge time. They're much here. older. Yeah, yeah so like 30 years old. in order to understand why he says he's going to die in the book of Jasher, we still have Nimrod. Nimrod is apparently somehow in the field that Esau is hunting, and Esau goes out and slays him and a couple of his men, and all of his men ran away in fear that their, their king was dead. So 
he runs back home. Esau goes back home, and then was hungry, right? He, I mean, he's famished. He's ran home, which is probably a long ways. He just went to battle with, like, the king of the world. He just, he just committed world. a murder. And he the, literally just killed, like, the strongest dude in the planet. The the king of the world, the, the most feared guy ever out there. And, and he just went and killed him, and that was that. And it wasn't just a man. Uh, Nimrod was, like, like, I wouldn't say a man's man, but he was, he had, um... He had the garments of Adam and Eve, and so, and it also says he became a, a he became a, a giant. Like so, he was whatever they were doing, whatever he and his mama wife were doing, um, was transforming him into a uh, a monster, a machine. So anyway, this wasn't just a dude. He just went out there, popped a dude. He popped the strongest, most w- wild dude on the on the planet, and. Um, so he's probably thinking that, it's well, these people are going to come back and kill me for that. So uh, just have my birthright, man. It'll do you better than it will do me. And then uh, he never died like that. So yeah. he never lost his birthright. They never found him. Yeah, they never found him. So, okay, gentlemen, I believe that is what we are going to conclude with this. And everybody out there, we thank you guys very, very much for spending your time with us. If you make it to the end of these, um, all we are trying to do is dig out the, the real laws, statutes, and commands of our creator Get them to paper so that they're easy to figure out, easy to follow, and um, they're a, they're a life blessing. Kate, how, how have the Torah? How's the Torah blessed your life? Uh, there's a lot of ways the Torah has blessed our lives. Like we are, we live much like healthier. Like when you eat when you eat the unclean foods, it makes you very very sick. And when you start eating the clean foods, you feel healthier. The toxins leave your body, and you feel like you lose a lot of weight from that as well. Yeah, and there's that's there's that's only one hundreds, there. if not thousands, of blessings that come from keeping and reading the Torah and becoming one with Yah. I guess one of the biggest things is it, it keeps your life in in it, with like you said, not getting sick. It keeps your life in order. It keeps um, it keeps you holy. It keeps you righteous. It keeps You're, you out of trouble. Trouble that could have been if you weren't in the Torah and you went off and did some crime because you did not know the Torah. You'd be stuck in prison for. X yeah. amount of years, and but if you knew the Torah, you're gonna keep yourself away from that trouble. Yeah, you're gonna stay away from from evil. A lot of stuff that Solomon says to keep, stay away from that he actually ended up falling into it towards the end Before of his. He his married seven hundred. Yeah, seven hundred women. So. That's All right, guys. All thank right. you guys very much. Much love to everybody out there. Thank you guys for for hanging out. We are going to catch you another time. We're All out. Right. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.